it vanished. For seven long months, Voyager 2 floated in silence beyond the edge of the solar system. Disconnected, presumed lost, a ghost ship in the cosmic dark. NASA prepared for the worst. After nearly five decades, one of humanity's greatest machines had finally gone quiet. But then, something unexpected happened. A signal returned. Not just a ping or a pulse, but a transmission. And not from where it should have been. What came through wasn't just data. It was something stranger, something layered, something no one had seen before. The question now isn't just why Voyager 2 turned back. It's what it found before it did. And that answer may be exactly what we feared all along. When Voyager 2 launched in 1977, it wasn't designed to come back. It had no brakes, no return path, no landing gear just a one-way ticket into deep space. Its mission was to study the giants of our solar system and then drift forever into the unknown. For decades, it fulfilled that role silently and faithfully, sending back images and data from worlds we'd never seen up close. But something changed when it crossed the boundary of the heliosphere in 2018. Scientists had always imagined the edge of the solar system as a clear border, a transition from solar influence to interstellar space. What they didn't expect was that, on the other side, Voyager 2 would enter a region where the rules no longer made sense. Turbulence, unpredictable radiation, a silence so thick it felt engineered. And then, in 2020, total loss of contact. It was chalked up to maintenance errors or a routine loss of orientation. But behind closed doors, concern was growing. The probe had survived solar flares, micrometeorites, cosmic dust, and now it was just gone? For months, nothing. Then, unexpectedly, a weak signal was detected, not coming from where Voyager 2 should have been, and not formatted the way it used to be. When the systems were recalibrated and the link re-established, what came through wasn't what engineers expected. It wasn't just telemetry or status reports, it was something else. At first, the return data looked corrupted. Garbled code, ancient system calls, fragments of subsystems that hadn't been active in over three decades. But as teams analyzed the stream, something even more bizarre emerged. The probe had begun transmitting through a communications channel that had been deactivated back in the 1980s. It wasn't supposed to be usable, yet Voyager 2 was not only accessing it, it was formatting its data using protocols that were long considered obsolete. More than that, it was sending recursive patterns, data loops that referenced its own operational history in a way that no one at NASA had programmed. It was like Voyager had become aware of its own memory and was attempting to recreate or preserve itself through the very language it was built on. Some believed this was a fail-safe mechanism triggered by environmental stress. Others weren't so sure. The data wasn't random. It followed mathematical symmetry echoed past commands, and behaved like a response, not a malfunction. It was almost as if Voyager had encountered something out there. And whatever it was, it had read the probe, understood its systems, and was now speaking through it. Not in words, but in digital architecture, in patterns, in echoes of Voyager's own voice. And just like that, a spacecraft designed only to send became something far stranger, a possible messenger or worse, a mirror. Publicly, NASA maintained composure, calling the behavior unexpected but explainable. Internally, however, the situation was anything but routine. Voyager 2's signal was immediately rerouted to a closed group of engineers and data analysts with strict access restrictions and encrypted protocols. Some insiders leaked details anonymously, terms like unknown interaction detected, command response anomaly, and pre-signal behavior began to circulate. What worried them wasn't just that Voyager was sending strange data. It was that some of it seemed to react to Earth-based inputs before those inputs even reached the probe. That defied not only the laws of engineering, but the laws of causality. Quantum theorists were quietly consulted. Speculations about time dilation, non-linear transmissions, or even higher dimensional feedback loops started to surface. 
but there was one idea that stuck with everyone involved. The possibility that Voyager had encountered something that doesn't exist in space as we understand it. A region, a force, or an intelligence that can see beyond time and manipulate signals like we manipulate speech. And if that's true, then we're not looking at a probe that turned itself around. We're looking at a system that was redirected, possibly not by us, and possibly not for us. For years, humanity has flirted with the idea that we're not alone. It's in our fiction, our theories, our late-night debates. But deep down, we always clung to the comfort of silence. The absence of evidence was a kind of safety. Because silence meant distance. Silence meant we could observe the universe without it observing us. But Voyager 2 might have changed that. Its behavior, its signal, its shift. They don't feel like a system breaking down. They feel like a response. And that brings us to the fear so many have quietly harbored. What if space isn't empty? What if it's not passive? What if it's aware? Not in the way we are. Not in biology or intelligence, but in structure, in form, in memory. What if the moment we stepped beyond the sun's protective shell, something else noticed? And what if Voyager 2 didn't just turn back out of error, but because something out there nudged it, watched it, maybe even reached into it and left something behind? We've always imagined the unknown is far away. But what if it's already here? Not outside our solar system, but inside our machines, traveling back home at the speed of light. Once the Voyager 2 signal was stabilized and decoded, something happened that no one expected. Within the anomaly-laced data stream, scientists discovered numerical values that didn't match any current system used by NASA. These weren't hexadecimal codes or packet structures. They were pure, structured sequences, self-contained, repeating, and synchronized with no known timestamp. The patterns had symmetry, complexity, and, disturbingly, intent. Some segments echoed values Voyager 2 had recorded during its encounters with Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Others referenced positions and measurements the probe was never supposed to make. And then came the coordinates, a string of values that pointed not outward, but back toward the solar system to a precise location far beyond Pluto's orbit. This wasn't just unexpected, it was impossible. Voyager 2 had no instruments to triangulate that point, no mission parameters that could justify this transmission. Yet here it was, hidden within the chaos, a location seemingly marked. Some called it a navigation error, others weren't so sure. It looked more like an instruction, or worse, an invitation. As the data poured in and simulations were run, physicists began to confront a difficult truth. Much of what we thought we understood about deep space no longer applied. The laws that governed relativity, signal decay, even the behavior of radiation in a vacuum, were beginning to unravel under scrutiny. Voyager 2's instruments, though primitive by today's standards, had recorded impossible fluctuations in background energy levels disturbances in the cosmic microwave background, sudden polarity reversals, and fields that fluctuated without any source. Some theories suggested a kind of gravitational lensing event, but there were no massive objects nearby. Others floated the idea of dark energy ripples or interaction with exotic particles. But a quiet faction of scientists began to entertain a more radical idea that Voyager 2 had crossed into and possibly emerged from a non-physical space, a place where information exists without matter, where time does not pass linearly, where a signal could be altered not by distance, but by conscious observation. That phrase alone set off alarms, because it hinted at something most physicists avoid at all costs, the possibility that reality responds to awareness. And if Voyager had encountered such a realm, if its signal was the echo of such an event, then what we received wasn't just corrupted data. It was a message shaped by the act of receiving it. While most of the public remained unaware of the true nature of the Voyager 2 incident, those closest to the mission began to feel the strain. 
Engineers who had worked on the spacecraft for decades reported unease. Some refused to discuss the data. Others requested transfers. A few went silent entirely. It wasn't burnout. It was something deeper, a kind of existential vertigo. The idea that a machine they helped build might have become something else, or worse, that it had been altered by something we can't define, became too much. Even at the highest levels of NASA, meetings began shifting from analysis to containment. Not of the probe, but of belief. Because belief is fragile, and the belief that the universe is stable, predictable, unmoved by our presence, that belief is what science is built on. Voyager 2's signal, its strange redirection, the anomalies layered within it. They weren't just bending science, they were breaking identity. If a machine can carry back signs of non-local intelligence, if space itself can change the machine, then nothing we do is truly isolated. We are not just floating observers, we are connected, interlinked, participating. And once you accept that, the world you return to isn't the same. The most haunting realization came weeks after contact was restored, not from the probe itself, but from the deep space sensors monitoring its path. As Voyager 2 moved away from the mysterious coordinates it had marked, the space behind it wasn't still. Instruments detected faint waves, not gravitational, not electromagnetic, but something new. A distortion, trailing the probe like a shadow, not a field, not a signal, a memory. Something that lingered in the vacuum long after Voyager had passed, as if the fabric of space remembered the interaction. It didn't decay, it pulsed, regularly, silently, and then, inexplicably, it stopped. The wave, the trail, the echo, vanished, not gradually but instantly, as if someone had closed a door. And that was the moment many finally understood. The void is not empty. It never was. It watches. It listens. And sometimes, it responds. What Voyager 2 found out there wasn't just the edge of our influence. It was the threshold of something else's. And now, for the first time in human history, we may have crossed it. For nearly five decades, Voyager 2 was a silent ambassador of Earth, a drifting testament to our curiosity, to our courage, and to our hope that the universe was waiting with answers. But now, it has returned not with clarity, but with something far more haunting, confirmation. Confirmation that space is not passive, that the void is not empty, that when we reach far enough into the dark, the dark reaches back. What Voyager 2 has shown us isn't just that we're being watched, but that we've already been seen. That something out there knows our machines, understands our language, and perhaps even waited for one to arrive. The moment contact was restored, the illusion of cosmic silence collapsed, not with a roar, but with a whisper, a data stream, a shift, a signal that said in its own strange way, you're not alone. And now we stand at a threshold, the line between known and unknown, between science and myth, between wonder and dread, it's behind us now. We've crossed it, not with a flag or a footprint, but with a signal, a machine, a question that may never be fully answered. But if Voyager 2 taught us anything, it's that the universe doesn't need to speak to send a message. Sometimes all it has to do is turn around. So what do you believe? Was this just malfunction and coincidence? Or did Voyager 2 encounter something that was never meant to be touched? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe for more mind-bending discoveries from the edge of space. And remember, the silence wasn't silence. It was the beginning.